Good morning, everybody. My name is Kim, and welcome to Bookmarks and Breadsticks, as I put myself in focus. <laughs> A first shout out before we get started. The, at the end of this month is Independent Bookstore Day. Independent Bookstore Day supports new and rising indie bookstores throughout the United States. I will link, I will put the specific date right here. I believe it's April 21st. Remember that independent bookstores need our help more than ever. Given COVID, we're still only coming out of COVID, at least in the US, we've started vaccination programs, but for a lot of us, it's still not that easy to go to a lovely bookstore. A lot of that book traffic really impacted these businesses. So if you can, stop by your local bookstore, or don't forget, you can purchase books online through the independent bookstores website. They can get you those brand new books. You're looking for accidentally engaged, brand new. They can order it for you if they don't already have it in stock. Don't forget that most independent bookstores will give you free shipping for a book above $25, and they usually ship anywhere within the United States. Mother's Day's coming. Father's Day's coming. Any excuse to buy a book is coming. The holidays are months away, but they're coming. Consider buying books from your independent bookstore. Also at the end of April this month is Earth Day. Earth Day is a wonderful organization. It's a wonderful, I don't know if you call it holiday, but it really is a time to reflect on the impact we have as people in the world that we inhabit and also how our food choices do impact us as well. So I'm here today with a list of suggested books that you could read with Earth Day. So I have eight different books for you today, kind of broken up into different areas of what you might want to read about. So for Earth Day, maybe you want to learn about ocean sustainability or how you and your purchasing decisions can impact our marine life. American Catch by Paul Greenberg is an amazing book that talks about some of the most over hunted, over utilized seafood and how they could actually be disappearing from our world forever. Things like sockeye salmon, the eastern oyster, and the Louisiana brown shrimp. American... Oh, I just realized there's a little PR thing in this book. See, that's the good thing about buying used books. Oh my goodness. Anyway, American Catch offers an optimistic perspective on the connection between preserving our salt marshes and restoring America's offshore seafood production. A fascinating discussion of a multifaceted issue with a passionate call to action. This is from Kirkus Review. So American Catch, The Fight for Our Local Seafood was published in 2014. Paul Greenberg examines the logic defying problem with American seafood consumption. Greenberg, whose previous book, Four Fish, was a New York Times bestseller, sets out to explore the depth of three quintessential American seafoods, the New York oyster, the Gulf shrimp, and the sockeye salmon, the Alaskan sockeye salmon. So I think this is a great book to understand what you can do. The difference between fish, farm-raised fish, versus do you, should I buy an authentic, uh, like an actual Alaskan sockeye salmon? What is that doing to supply chain? How do we what Greenberg, what Paul is really trying to talk about is how do we make sure there's enough fish and time to let these populations recover before we just hunt them to extinction. Another great book, if you're interested in seafood, this is what we can do as a consumer. Eat Like a Fish, which is by Bren Smith, is his journey to becoming a seafood sustainability advocate. This was also the 2020 James Beard Award Best Book in Nonfiction. Bren Smith, he's a hero. He essentially used to be a man who worked on the fishing boats. He used to bring in fish. And when he saw that the fish, more and more fish were disappearing, he became, by trial by fire, learning by doing, he became an ingenious vertical farming expert. He specializes in vertical farming of kelp and shellfish on the Thimble Islands. And it's about Bren's journey. I mean, he was a fisherman. He learned to adapt to what was going on in the world, saw these changes, and now has become a vertical farming expert. I loved this book. This was this made a this made my list of top books in 2020. I love that Bren swears like a sailor, and it's very authentic to the sense that what I found very charming was Bren's authenticity and his voice. He 
Full out says, I'm a sailor, worked on a fishing boat, barely made it through high school. I'm not an intelligent human being. And these are all the things I learned about vertical farming. This made the book so much more approachable and it made me want to buy kelp from him, except I live in Chicago. Like it makes me really excited to see what I can do. It makes Dan and I excited when we move into our first home. What can we do? Should we get into aquaponics? I don't know, but it really is a wonderful, wonderful book. It's a quick read and it's award winning. So clearly you don't even have to just trust my word for it. The James Beard Award says a lot too. Okay, so we've been in the ocean. Now let's talk about animals on the land. I have two recommendations, Eating Animals by Jonathan Foer. He is the author of Everything is Illuminated. When, so Jonathan spent his life oscillating between being vegetarian and eating meat. And when he has a child of his own, he has to answer some really hard questions from his kid about why do we eat animals? So eating animals is part of Jonathan's personal journey, traveling to the darkest corners of our dining habits Foer raises that unspoken question behind every fish we eat, every chicken we fry, and every burger we grill. Part memoir and part investigative report, Eating Animals is a book that, in the words of Los Angeles Times, secures Jonathan Safran Foer as a place at the table of our greatest philosophers. Really excited. I actually haven't read this yet. I'm completely honest with you. I have been waiting for this to get into a reprint where I could buy a quality cover version. I love used books, don't get me wrong, but I don't want a used book that looks like someone stamped, like stomped on it. So I finally got it for $5 at Open Books and I'm super excited. I'm actually gonna try and read this in April. Another book that came from Reckon Books and the University of Chicago Press, I actually reviewed this book last year, is Why Waste Food? And this is about our environmental impact and how it investigates food waste across the global supply chain. So things like, do you ever notice that all the oranges look the same at the grocery store? Think about it. All the bananas look the same? Think about it. That's because we're throwing away a third of our food because they don't meet those visual quality standards. This is a great pocket book, 150 pages plus citations of food waste and what you can do to avoid it. And I think this is a super approachable book. I go into way more detail in that review and I'll link it in the cards. But this is a wonderfully approachable book and I also recommend it for kids. If kids, you know someone who's a little bit younger and wants to understand how they can help the environment, this is a great book. Another part of Earth Day is understanding how your impact, us as mankind, is contributing to climate change and what climate change can do and what devastation it can bring. So one of the biggest things and one of the books I enjoyed last year was We Fed an Island by Jose Andres, the true story of rebuilding Puerto Rico one meal at a time. So this is, a, this is a true story of Jose Andres, a chef, a famous chef, getting on a plane and just going to Puerto Rico because he knew he had to help. The island was devastated by the hurricanes and no one was there to help them. Those hurricanes are largely contributed to climate change or climate change caused those hurricanes. And then we as a world are not prepared for more and more of those natural disasters that are going to continue in frequency, increase in frequency. So this is a wonderful narrative nonfiction. And this, in terms of where I would place this in Earth Day, this is, this is the results. This is what's gonna continue to happen to us. And also a wonderful story about Jose Andres and how he handles a crisis. And it offers suggestions on how to address a crisis like this in the future. The next three books are what I would consider the future of food and how we can help impact the earth, reduce climate change, and et cetera. This book is called Meat Planet, Artificial Flesh and the Future of Food by Benjamin Wargraft. This is all about lab-grown meat, lab-grown hamburgers. Is there a world where we're going to take the DNA of cows and clone it in a laboratory so that we can continue to feed the global supply chain, but reduce our CO2, our methane, our carbon emissions? Consumer agriculture farming organizations known as CAFOs are one of the largest contributors to climate change to the depletion of the ozone layer. And this book takes a look from a very scientific perspective, very science-based, very super heavy in the science, I'm <laughs> just warning you, about the future of meat and where we're going. The last two books, still in this future of food area, are some of my favorite books of all time. 
Next, The Third Plate, Field Notes on the Future of Food by Dan Barber. Dan Barber focuses on soil, land, sea, and seed. Dan Barber is a famous chef. He does have a restaurant in New York, um, Blue Hill, and then he actually has a restaurant outside of the city called Blue Hill on Stone Farms. And he is credited with being a large, comp a large advocate of the farm to table movement. Let me read the back cover for you. Today's farm to table revolution has a dark secret. The local food movement has failed to change how we eat. It has also offered a false promise of the future of food. In his visionary New York Times bestselling book, Chef Dan Barber offers a radical new way of thinking about food from the ground up. Looking beyond the misguided dining of our past and present, Barber points to the future third plate, a new paradigm of American eating where good farming and good cooking intersect. Barber's The Third Plate charts a bright path forward for eaters and chefs alike, daring everyone to imagine a food system that is sustainable as it is delicious. It is a food manifesto for the ages. I adore this book. I actually listened to it because Dan Barber narrated it himself. This is a book I want to reread. Ooh, my, my camera is overheating. Oh no, I want to get to the end of this. I have one more book to talk about. So if it cuts me off, it cuts me off. But this book is wonderfully written. It's so eloquent and it's Dan Barber's farm is built from the ground up. He talks about soil regeneration. He talks about heirloom varieties and continuing to use seeds harvest after harvest from his own farm, how he learned to raise ducks on that farm, goats on his farm, how those animals go across the farm to, I don't know, um, not, I don't want to be vulgar, um, not moss, compost, you know, how their excrements help fertilize the crown. It is a wonderful book. I really recommend it. It's so well researched. At one point I wanted to apply for his apprentice apprenticeship program for farmers on his, uh, his farm in upstate, not in upstate New York, in central New York. Like it really inspired me to take action, to learn about what I could do as a consumer. I adore this book. I'm probably, I am not doing it justice. I really recommend you read this. The last book, and my camera is still overheating, so we'll see how far we get, is The Fate of Food by Amanda Little. This is, again, probably one of my top five favorite books. This book is really what propelled me to learn about Food Tank, to take an internship with Food Tank, an unpaid internship to work on being a food news writer. I, The Fate of Food, How We'll Eat in a Bigger, Hotter, Smarter World. It is a wonderful book that talks about the future of food in the world and also what ways we can impact it. I learned about aquaponics for the first time and vertical farming for the first time. I learned about the importance of composting. I am just enamored by this book. And I also listened to it with Dan. And Dan and I have very different book tastes. Um, obviously I'm a huge nonfiction nerd. And even Dan loved this book. We would often pause the book as an audiobook at the end of each chapter to discuss what we learned and what we thought and could we implement this in our own lives. When we move into our house, we want solar panels. We want vertical farming. We want a garden. We want a compost. And I really attribute all of it to this book. It was approachable. It was inspiring. And I love it. All right. So those are all of my eight book, recommend eight book recommendations for Earth Day. If you haven't already, I would love for you to hit like and subscribe. Talk to me in the comments below. Did you know what aquaponics are? Do you know what vertical farming is? Do you have other recommendations for Earth Day? I'd love to hear from you below. And you can also find me online at Instagram. I hope you're well. Wear a mask and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.